Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading of the processional gospel from St. Luke. After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them, and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us go forth in peace.
Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon himself and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and just a couple of announcements as we begin. First of all, uh, this is the day that we, we ask the return of the offerings for our ELCA World Hunger Appeal. We receive those throughout the, uh, the, uh, the season of Lent. Also, the special Lenten offering envelopes that were in your box sets uh, all go to ELCA Disaster Relief, uh, an earmark for Ukraine, and uh, also for Warrior Run Neighbors Helping Neighbors. So we really appreciate your offerings uh, to those good causes. Thank you. Also, if you get a chance, uh, send a card or uh, uh, make a phone call to Bob and Phyllis Chapel, who are celebrating their 73rd wedding anniversary this week. So that's, that's tremendous. So be in contact with them if you know them. Also, this coming week, we celebrate in many ways. Uh, we have worship on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, all at 7 o'clock. And we've got a great crew of confirmation students who are, some of whom are here, <laughs> who are working hard at uh, putting those services together for us. They always do a great job. Uh, we've also got, on Monday, Thursday, four of our children who are going to be receiving their first communion, which is always a wonderful event for them as they, they take the Lord's Supper. They join the Lord's Supper for us, with us for the first time. And then on the great vigil of Easter, Holy Saturday at 7 o'clock, that's the service uh, I really encourage you to come to that because uh, six uh, of our brothers and sisters are going to be baptized that evening. And so uh, they are Mike Anderson and Joy Stirr, uh, Megan, uh, Megan uh, Suters and Abigail Gold, her daughter, as well as uh, Tommy Clemens and uh, Isabel Goss. And they're all going to be baptized on that, on that evening. And so it should be a wonderful evening. Uh, come to be the family of God for them, uh, welcoming them uh, into, into uh, fellowship with us and also uh, really into uh, the church on earth. Then on Sunday, of course, we have Easter sunrise service at 6.30, um, 8 o'clock breakfast, and 9.15 Easter egg hunt for our kids who are 6th grade and under. We need older kids to help hide those eggs next week, by the way. And then, of course, 10.30 worship. So, uh, I also need lots of help for those services. There are sign-up sheets in the rear of the nave. If you can take a look at that and see if you can help in some way, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and so with that, uh, we continue to, to hear the story of the passion of our Lord Jesus, and we hear the word of the Lord. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. We who are my adversaries, let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit.
mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken bond. Into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel of St. Luke records for us the first words of Jesus after he was nailed to the cross. And those first words of Jesus from the cross tell us what his true nature is really all about. Following judgment by Pilate, Pontius Pilate, Jesus was ordered to be crucified. On the way to the cross, Jesus was mocked and spit at, and he was beaten to the point of, of physically being unable to carry his own cross. When he finally arrived at the place of the skull, his hands and his feet were pierced by the nails. The crucifixion had just begun, but already Jesus was dealing with more pain than any of us can ever imagine. Think about this. With pain in nearly every part of your body and spectators gathering around to watch your death mocking you, what would you be praying for? <laughs> what would you pray for, right? Well, Jesus, he could have prayed for everything or anything at all. Uh, his father listened to him. Jesus could have prayed for relief from the anguish that was just beginning. He could have prayed for the executioners to end this painful ordeal. But he didn't do that. Instead, Jesus prays 
for humankind's greatest need, our greatest need. Jesus prayed for forgiveness. For the crowd that, that, that shouted, crucify him. For Pilate, who had washed his hands of ordering the execution. For the soldiers who mocked him and spit on him and beat him, put the cross on his back. For uh, the one who swung the whip, beating his back to a pulp. For the one who swung the hammer, driving those nails into his hands and his feet. The ones who gambled for his clothing at the foot of the cross. Jesus prayed for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus took the brunt of the cross for all of them and prayed that they would be forgiven. But it wasn't just them. Jesus died for all of us. We are part of the crucifixion story because our sins were part of the weight that was on that cross. For the times that we made mistakes and didn't follow God's will, for our efforts to trivialize our sins and say it was just a mistake that didn't matter, for the times that we ignored our neighbor's needs and simply focused on ourselves, for every time that we broke God's laws, his commandments, the expectations he has for us, just like the crowd that shouted, crucify him, We didn't always know what we were doing either. And Jesus prayed for us too. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And now here's the really good news. If Jesus can forgive Pilate who condemned him, the soldiers who beat him, and the executioner who swung the hammer hitting those nails, he can forgive all of us too. As baptized children of God, there's there's nothing that we've done that can't be forgiven by our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no sin so big that we won't receive his mercy. So we repent of our sins and we know that Jesus' first words from the cross, Father, forgive them, aren't just for those who crucified him. They're for all of us, too. This is the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table Or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, 
and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, What is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came. And the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, Is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, And the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. 
Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. And they all shouted together, Away with this fellow. Release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, Do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 
The days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others? Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Please stand. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now, There was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed. They saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day, they rested according to the commandment.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. God, our help in time of trouble and suffering, we praise and thank you for vindicating your son Jesus, our suffering servant, as he suffered and died on the cross. Lord, in your mercy, crucified Savior, when the world had poured out all of its scorn and hatred and cruel punishment against you, and the powers of evil sought your ultimate destruction. You put all of your trust in the Lord your God for your deliverance. In the face of evil, may we also place all of our trust in the Lord, our deliverer. We pray especially that the war in Ukraine would end, that the Russian aggression would be stopped. We pray for the dead, the wounded, the grieving, the refugees. Bring peace, O Lord, in this region. Lord, in your mercy, cross-bearing Christ, grant us your attitude, mindset, and spirit to learn that it is not in power but in weakness, not in pride, but in humility, not in doing our own will, but in obedience to you, that we discover the real meaning and purpose of our lives. We repent of our lust for power, our deceitful pride and selfishness which motivate us. Forgive us, Jesus, that we may be more willing disciples, boldly confessing your lordship over our lives and all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, God of all the suffering, you led your son every step of the way through his suffering and crucifixion. Today we remember all who suffer. Be their source of comfort and strength by leading them through their suffering and the cross they bear. Especially we lift for your healing power Bobby and Jeanette Calhoun, Leroy and Ruth Kotner, Bev Heverly, Irene Watson, Bob Shetler, Shirley Mangus, Joyce Osmond, Jim Yost, John Fligger, Charlie Wright, Mike Benfer, Lucille Hoffman, Harold Raup, Ron Seckler, Lily Brooks, Andrew Bieber, Janice Knauer, Mary Ann Ott, Ron Ott, Susan Grube, Lori Yost, Sally Kaufman, Kathy Hillard, Pastor Bill Jones, Marilyn, Ronnie Johnston, Tammy Wan, Donna Bridges, Sandy Raver, Jeff Grube, Eileen Montgomery, Joyce Wall, Bob Temple, Dorothy Anderson, Jason Gamion, Russ Wynn, Stephanie Smith, Michael Kenny, Derek Kotner, Chris Bolt, Rosa Kuhn, Max Bieber, Donald Hall Jr. And all we name out loud before you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit that they may recover and be well. Watch over those who care for them. We also lift before you those who have died, Susan Gallion, Del Hammershock, Gary Lear, and all those that we name in our hearts and minds now. We entrust them, Almighty God, to your loving care. We ask that your, your comfort and your, your arms, your arms of, of consolation would be around those who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, Savior of the world this day and holy week, please guide and direct our hearts, souls, minds, and lives to focus more clearly on your entry into Jerusalem and the events which unfolded during the last week of your life in the flesh here on earth. May your Holy Spirit enlighten, inspire, and empower us concerning your passion, giving us the will and courage to spread this wonderful message near and far. Especially, we lift up our candidates for baptism. Joyce Durr, Michael Anderson, Megan Suters, Abigail Gold, Thomas Clemens, and Isabel Goss. May their journey with all of us through this Holy Week bring them to their baptism to life eternal with you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace.
Almighty God, merciful Father, you are indeed holy, enthroned on the praises of your people. With Israel, we bring our praises before you, as we behold the wonder of your goodness and your redemptive love for us. In that love, you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was acclaimed King and Lord as he entered Jerusalem in triumph. By that same love, he was handed over by an act of betrayal and consigned to death, thereby taking every human struggle and the suffering of every age to the cross. By his holy wounds we have been healed. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, Cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. We rejoice, Almighty Father, in our Lord's life and holy passion his resurrection, and his ascent into glory, and we trust in his promise to come again when we, with all your people, will sing our hosannas to him at our joyful resurrection. Send now, O God, your holy and life-giving spirit upon us, upon this bread of heaven and this cup of blessing, that in receiving Christ's most precious body and blood, we may be united in the forgiveness of sins and in that final hope of glory and praise with your Son. Gather the church from every time and every place into the everlasting peace and freedom won by Christ as we acclaim through him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Thanks be to God.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to you.